So have you ever wondered like, why do we keep getting the exact same GPUs every generation? It's kind of like how Bethesda keeps re-releasing Skyrim every single year. And your Samsung Smart Refrigerator. Islamus. Activision keeps re-releasing Call of Duty over and over again. I mean, Nvidia's RTX 4060 is basically the exact same as the RTX 3060, but in some ways the 4060 is actually worse. Our AMD 7800 XT is basically the exact same as their 6800 XT. And even the RX 7600 is basically just a 6650 XT AMD's cards, and they're going for about the same price. It's like, why do we keep getting the same ones over and over again? Then have you ever thought, do you ever want to do anything about it? Yeah, so this guy did. He made his own GPU. It's no secret in the graphics card space that so there's basically two main competitors, and that is NVIDIA and AMD. Now, these guys are on top of the game, and if you just look on the Steam hardware survey as well, obviously NVIDIA is even beating out AMD there, but AMD is their closest competitor. Now, why is it mainly these two companies. Well, it's for one main reason, and it's these two companies keep their secrets under wraps. It's very difficult to make a GPU because there's almost nothing like open source to the public to work with. So if I just look up like open source graphics instruction sets, like I don't know if you'd be able to find this on Google in general, but there isn't that much to work with. From my understanding, especially from an LTT video, the biggest players all like to keep their secret sauce firmly in their satchel. Some companies have tried. One that we've seen recently is like like more threads. Now this is a Chinese company that is making their own graphics cards based in China. And we see here the MTTS80. By the sheer fact that a company is able to make a graphics card that does function, that doesn't mean it functioned well. Like if we kind of look through um, this Gamers Nexus video, they actually got their hands on a Chinese more threads graphics card. This graphics card only works with certain motherboards. Like you can't just plug this into any motherboard. I didn't even know it was a thing that was a problem for a graphics card. I thought that when he plugged it into the PCIe slot, it just worked, but no, no, it doesn't work with some motherboards. They just don't recognize it. But then there's other problems. Like obviously it doesn't exactly perform that well in games like this GPU. It draws like 250 Watts and is performing like a GTX 750 Ti, which is a low end graphics card that come at, came out in 2014. The rough performance of this GPU kind of sits around uh, the GT 1030, which is a 30 watt card. This card, pulls about 250 watts. They did make a product that works and does function. And that's, that part is impressive, but to make it function well is just a whole other level. We all know Intel has been at this for quite a while. Here's an Intel Arc A750. Intel has struggled with their graphics card as well. They've definitely come a long way, but Gamers Nexus did do a follow-up video in 2024 updating us on Arc. And there's some games where Intel Arc performs really well. This is an Arc A770, which is like a $300 graphics card or so. And it's outperforming like AMD's $330 graphics card here. But then there's other games where just you don't see that same performance. Like GTA 5, like Arc just performs really poorly. It's down here, like it can't even achieve 30 FPS in GTA 5. Years. I know they've released GTA 5 like Elder Scrolls has. You should be able to run this on your card and it underperforms in this. And then there's still things like with Starfield, like Intel Arc just doesn't run that well. So even though Intel has had iGPUs, so integrated GPUs on their CPUs for like over 10 years now. They still have had issues with their graphics cards and they've been putting out updates like crazy and they've made a lot of progress. But even a company the size of Intel and even with the experience that Intel has, they still have struggled with their graphics cards because it's just that hard to make a graphics card. Let's jump into this GPU. Let me get all these GPUs off of my lap. This is the Fury GPU and this is by Dylan Barry. Absolutely insane. So if we kind of look down here at the the description, Dylan Barry as himself, he said, throughout the last 14 years of my career in the games industry and almost nearly a decade before that in his spare time, he said that he's been focused on the software side of rendering techniques and all that kind of stuff. So what he thought he would do is try to make a GPU himself like he's been working on software why not try to make the hardware side and that's exactly what he did part and we can just see it actually running here just to be able as a singular person be able to make a gpu 
that can run the Windows desktop. That is insane. I, I'm not saying it's good. It's not groundbreaking or earth shattering to make a functioning piece of hardware that companies like Intel, I mean, they've been able to make functioning, you know, they can display out to Windows, but that they can struggle with sometimes. And then beyond this point, this was five months ago. Uh, just recently, he actually released it running Quake. It's the original version of Quake, which came out in like the 90s, but it's a fully like 3D game. And he has a GPU that can run the game. which is just absolutely insane. Now, if you see down here, there's some reported frames. I think these are the frame times, like 38 mil milliseconds or so. I'm not exactly sure where his frame rate is, but he's claiming that this is 60 FPS. And I don't deny him that it looks like 60 FPS to me. You might hear that the audio is kind of crackly and stuff like that. I don't think that's exactly running perfectly. But just the fact that one person made a GPU that can run a game. Yeah, it's an old game. But to run a game, that is insane. And there's tons of tests on his channel just showing the progress here. And as you can see, things just get more impressive as we come to what's been more and more recent here. And when you go to his website, I think this is just funny. This is his homepage. Like I just scrolled to the bottom. This is his home page. And then he has the about section kind of explaining some stuff about the, the Fury GPU. And then also his blog where he's posting updates on the things, which at this current moment, he only has two updates about the GPU. And I think it's really important to explain why this is so damn difficult. So if we hop on to his, his little page here, he kind of gave a rundown of what he's had to go through in order to make this son of a all right and right here he says of all this project writing windows drivers has been the most painful he has to write literally how it communicates and how it displays windows like you think that just happens naturally but no he has to figure out how to do that then he said he eventually got the windows drivers working then he had to write a custom graphics api to communicate with the gpu which if you don't know what an api is now this is an application programming interface a bunch of mumbo jumbo but if you know things like directx which is used in almost every single game, or like Vulkan or OpenGL. These are all graphics APIs that generally work on GPUs. He had to write an API just to work with his graphics card. And so he wrote Windows kernel drivers for the display and the audio, and now has a fu fully functioning piece of graphics hardware that can render Quake at a solid 60 frames per second. Wild how much you have to do. You don't, you don't get any leeway. You have to make every single part to make this graphics card function. And I bet you're wondering at this point in time, well, how did he also make the silicon? How did he make the chip that is on the GPU? Because that's obviously very important. How does a normal person even get access to something like that? He used a FPGA. You're like, what the heck is an FPGA? When you look it up on Google, this is what it tells you. It's called a field programmable gate arrays field programmable gate arrays that's fpga basically what this is is kind of like an off-the-shelf chip that you can program to do pretty much whatever you want it to do so if you want to test something or if you want to just try out something custom for a shorter period of time as like prototyping it is really good for that that's what makes it kind of the perfect candidate for something like this where like a normal person can program this general purpose chip to do what they want it to do i also think it's really funny on this card that it's usually literally using a barrel jack <laughs> for power on it and i don't know what the little sd card is maybe it's like the the ram that it's working with i have no clue but it's just funny that it uses a barrel jack well how this this project started off was he saw that some fpga fpgas are made obviously and you can kind of buy them and work on them for yourself if you want to just see here you can go on to google and you can actually buy like something like an fpga i think that's a, the type of thing that's in like a raspberry pi and stuff like that you can kind of program these to do what you want them to do he saw that some companies made some more cheap yet also a very powerful fpgas i mean in terms of what kind of hardware we're working with here he can turn this into a real gpu 
That's what, he's like, now my mission, instead of just, you know, messing around with it, it's like, can I make anything function? He wanted to make it into a real GPU. Now the FPGA that he was using is one from Zillinex which is what, what these are. And Zillinex was actually acquired by AMD. Zillinex, I, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but they make FPGAs and stuff like that. Obviously, this is an insanely impressive project that Dylan has worked on here. And he plans on making this open source in the future. So keep your eye out for that if you wanna just mess around with this. I wanna point out that like, I think Dylan has even said this himself, that this isn't like going to be earth shattering. It's not like this is going to run as fast as even an Intel GPU, but really like an Nvidia or an AMD GPU, like that just kind of stuff. That's, that's not really what the goal of this project is, but it's really like a toy just to see what is possible that maybe we're more capable of this stuff than we ever thought before. Obviously, you have to have a lot of experience and be working very hard on it to make something like that function. But we'll see when it is open source of this graphics card here is able to make more capabilities in the future. It just blows me away what is possible, even though this isn't gonna compete, even what they, I don't even think this would compete with a More Threads GPU. <laughs> At least More Threads can play like 30 games. They actually just added 23 more games but the the fury gpu can only play like one obviously all links to his stuff is going to be in the description if you want to check it out and let me know what you think about it all right you guys have a good one just a cool topic i wanted to cover i'm gonna see you in the next one peace